Previously on Maple Story the Novel, Sacred Tears. Power output increasing. This is by far the greatest. I hope that you appreciate the enormous risk you've taken in using this dark alchemy. You got it working? It's amazing! Have you found anything that would tell you what the darkness is? And now the continuation of Chapter 4, Part 2. Our light is what needs to be present to drive back one's darkness and expose the wounds for healing and care. If hurt people are the ones creating this darkness, then giving them counseling should help with it, right? Adelia inquired, leaning forward as well in interest as Minodora shook her head and answered. If only that were it. Yeah, helping the people heal would be a big help. But the world is the biggest source of it. So far, it's only gotten worse since we've started helping where we can. And we don't know why. What about this ultimate light you were talking about? Wouldn't that be able to help? Adelia suggested. Dane nodded. It would. Ultimate light is the outward directed light I spoke of earlier. But it is diminished rather quickly, as it is something that can only be given away to actually help. For something as large as the world, all peoples of the world will need to have all their hurts healed. Menendora and I have found that all couples produce this light to varying degrees of strength. In a few months, we are going to attempt to spread this light from Aswan's Great Obelisk. I have already spoken to Busron, and he has agreed to the experiment. Silence fell over the small group. Maxis and Adelia tried to wrap their head around what had been said, until Minodora spoke once more. That reminds me, Maxis, how's the progress of your project going? I heard you recently put the body together? Minodora asked, instantly lifting Max's face into a smile. Yes, in fact. We are expecting partial mind transfer test within the next week, once the body has been fused. I would very much like for both of you to come, Maxis offered. Dane and Minodora both nodded, eager to see the progress in history about to be made. Karo casually made his way to the Akaldo's swing of the city with Maxis and Adelia, knocking on the door of the greasy mechanic's shop. Madei opened the door, wiping his grease-covered hand in the smoke. Yes? Oh, council members, what can I do for you? He asked, lumbering out his door and closing it behind him. Maxis noticed that Madei's apprentice Russell was hard at work at a table further inside the building before the door was closed. We came to you for an opinion. We believe that if Dr. Long's project is successful, that he should be granted the title of Master Alchemist of Margata, Adelia explained. Tilting his head slightly, Madei rubbed his chin as the last bit of grease on his hand smeared like a dark beard. That does sound fair. But what of our current Master Alchemist, Han? Hasn't he proven to be a great leader? Adelia nodded before adding her thoughts. Han has indeed been a competent leader for nearly a decade now. But as with alchemy, if new ideas and advancements are not made, the art becomes stagnant. So too does being Master Alchemist. We all believe it is time to let a new Master Alchemist be appointed to bring a new perspective to the city. Madei listened with intent, rubbing his chin and darkening his grease beard. Your argument is valid. Give me a day to consider this, and I will give you an answer. Madei answered, beginning to turn back for his shop. I'm sorry, Madei, Maxis interjected, but we really must have your answer tonight. Dr. Long has decided that his first mind-melding test will begin tomorrow night. Madei paused and sighed hard. I will then. Let me have an hour, and I will come and find one of you for my choice. The three on his doorstep nodded in acceptance and left to their various duties. Madei turned back to his door to find Russell sprawling across the floor when he opened it. What are you doing so close to the door, Russell? Madei asked with an edge in his voice. I couldn't help wanting to hear what the council was saying. Are you truly going to appoint Dr. Long to the position of Master Alchemist? Russell challenged, his eyebrow lifting in a devious way. I am currently considering the council's recommendation. Of course, his appointment hinges on the success of his experiment. Madei grunted, lumbering back to his desk and pulling over a machine he had been working on, drawing a matrix around it on paper. Why should he be the only one to be considered? Russell asked with a hint of disdain in his tone. Madei turned back to him with a lowered brow. Is there someone else you can think of? If so, please tell me so that I can make a recommendation to the council. Madei pressed, 
Russell turned, throwing his cape aside grandly. Why not me? Have I not made immense strides forward in our biomechanical alchemy? And what of my exceptional scores in the Alchemic Academy? You yourself have said that I have a vast intelligence rivaled by even the most learned of minds. Made sighed hard and stood, his face becoming blank. What I said of your intelligence, while being true, also stated that it still needed the temperance of wisdom and time. I do not dispute your vast mind, but you are far too hasty, and your heedless regard for your fellow man is one of the many reasons that you have not been granted the title of alchemist. You have potential to be a great master alchemist one day, which is why I had you learn from Carl. But you are not ready for such responsibility. So you admit to holding me back while others apprentice to you spend half the time I have and are granted the title of alchemist. What of my advancements? Those alone should grant me the ability, no, the right to be master alchemist. Isn't it my research of life transference that Dr. Long is using? Made's face turned down in a mighty frown, his plump cheeks sagging nearly to his throat. Yes, your theory is solid and has been proven, yet you only discovered that it could be done. While your research was a base, it had to be further researched for another two years. Our work dances within the grey ethics at times, but I will not allow you or any of my students to lower themselves as much. There is weight to life. All life. Made thundered, his form appearing to grow in size as he stood over Russell, pummeling him with his words. You have not earned the privilege of being nominated for Master Alchemist, let alone an alchemist. Made barked, turning to leave with heavy steps while Russell clenched his jaw. What do you think we are? We are gods among men. Science and alchemy is our power. We can create that which is reserved for the divine. Russell shouted when Made turned back to him with a hard stomp. We are not gods. It is because we have an understanding of science and alchemy that we must be wary of how to use it. I would take Morgana to new and greater heights! Our power would be limitless! We would be hailed as heroes and gods! Made marched to Russell, striking him hard enough to throw him to the ground. We must have limits! If not, we are no better than animals! It is obvious to me that you haven't learned well enough about your place in the world. You are to start from the beginning in your lessons of alchemy. I refuse to be brought low. You want proof of successful research? Then here, have a look. Russell growled, running to a door leading to the back of the machine shop and threw it open. Inside were scores of machines, all in differing stages of completion resembling small bodies. As he opened the door, the smell of decay wafted in, making Made heave. What in the name of the Great Mother is all this? He asked. His voice echoed through the chamber. The machines all stopped and looked at him, beginning to rush the door with the sounds of mechanical screams and hisses. Russell slammed the door shut, bolting it as the small machine slammed against it. I've proven it can be done! Life can be transferred from a body into a machine! It is possible! Which is why I brought it to Long in the first place! You see, without me, your Dr. Long would be nothing! What did you use for your experiments? Made growled, his usually beady eyes wide in horror that he had been so blind all this time. What does it matter? I can manipulate the human life force at will! Not even Heim would be able to stop me! Made's face cycled through shades of red, tightening his iron grip with every word spoken until he could no longer stand to see Russell in his presence. Gather your things and get out. You are no student of mine. I do not want to see you in this building when I return, or ever again. You are barred from learning all alchemy in the future and from the knowledge depository. Made see it, turning and leaving through the front door and slamming it shut. <laughs> Russell's mind churned. Why should Dr. Long be appointed to the position of Master Alchemist? Long had done many experiments heralded as a triumph, where his experiments were scorned as an ethical abomination. Where was the line? Where was the difference? Hypocrites. All of them. He muttered, gathering up his belongings and sluggishly leaving the building. But it wasn't out of resistance to go. No, it was out of putrid madness. If Dr. Long would be appointed for his success, then he would only need to fail. 
and that would leave the door open for him to sweep in as the hero to condemn such ill-fated experiments. Yes, it was perfect.